Hey, welcome friends. In this video, we're going to take an almost exclusively programmatic approach to making a grid view powered by SQL Server using C Sharp. Let's take a look at what I mean here. Crank up our usual project of the web type at a grid view. And now let's get going from here. I'm not showing this step obviously to save time. So first we're going to lay out a small interface and the purpose of our little application will be to read a query, send it to the server, process it, and then return some results back to the web page. Just to show you some of the things that you can do. Now keep in mind that because this is coming from a web page, I'm obviously doing it safely on my computer, but you don't want to, <laughs> in general, in real life, expose your server right to queries written on the internet by malicious people just keep that in mind this is purely academic just to show you some basic things that you can do all right i'm going to go over to source view here and right above my grid view i am going to type the following here i'm going to first input the word query right here like that and remember, the websites that we make here run only locally, correct? They're available only in our local computers. They can't be reached from the outside. So, And after that, I'm going to put a text box, as shown here. So the text box ID is text box 1. You can change that if you want. You can type TXT, for example, and query. So TXT is short for text box. So text query means it's a box. You type in the query there. The other stuff can be left. All right, under this, we are going to put a button. So into the toolbox, search box, type B-U-T-T -T on the left side. Left press, and then while pressing, drag a button and drop it in. So now we have a button control we've added to the page. Okay, let me uh, change this so it says B-T-N and then submit. So we understand its purpose. So button submit. And see this text equals button? You can change that so it says something more meaningful. For example, like equals, and then between double quotes, just input some text that you wanted to say, like, for example, run the query. All right, I hope you've got that. And at the bottom, under the grid view, we're also going to have a label. So again, type LAB on the left side in the toolbox, and then left press and drag and drop a label into the source view here. And a label you can leave, unless, for example, over here you want to give it a different ID. You can call it, for example, LBL error. Okay. So this label will show us any errors that occur, and I'll show you how to do that. And for the text, if you want, you can clear that out. It's still present. There's just no text, that's all. All right, so switch over to design view for a second. And as you can see, this is the interface. And the only thing is that the position of the button is not the one that I like. So we want to perhaps put the button between the box and the grid view. Unless you want it there, that's fine. So switch back to source view, and you can do that. As follows, you can, after the text box over here, type, add one of these, add a BR, a break. Okay. I give this a build, so up top, hit build or sh control shift B if you like. Control shift B. Make sure it builds, it takes. Go back to design view. Notice the button now is between the box and the grid view. All right, hit Google Chrome. Before we do anything else, we want to confirm the interface is in a decent state. And it is. And of course, right now, if we just click the button there, see that? It looks like that. So what we're going to do next, obviously, is we need to add something that will read from the box, send to the server, get data, and then return to the grid view. That's the overall logic here. So let me close this. And to do that, place your cursor over the button and then left double click on it. And it should give you a code stub similar to this one. So this is the code that will run when somebody clicks on the button. 
So let me just add this as a comment here. So it runs when button is clicked. This code stub. This is also often called the event handler because it handles programmatically the event of clicking on the button. Somebody clicks on it, it is called an event. And this is the event handler because it responds to that event. Okay, the next stage. You see this? If you get one of these page load for our purposes, you can even get rid of it. You don't have to do anything there. doesn't matter too much. So I'm going to pull down a little bit, and this is what we have so far. Freeze it if you have to. Look at it. Okay, now let's get going here. So the first thing that we are going to do is add a data set object. And we will use that as a basically kind of in-memory thing that we can then use as the data source for our grid view. That's the reason for having that added at the first stage. So I'm going to type here private. The word private is usually recommended when you're declaring something at the level of a class. Notice that this, this what I'm declaring here, is not coming within this. It's not inside the event handler. It's at the level of a class, you see? And again, not a class on C-sharp, so I can't go over all the detail, but the big ones. So private simply means it's hidden and tucked away, and no one can come and access it and change it against your will. All right, so private, and then data set. And notice, unfortunately, in this case, it doesn't show. A lot of stuff shows except what you need. That often means that up here in this block that says using system and so on, you need to add a using directive. And the purpose of these is to give us access to code already created by other people. So let me do that now. I'm going to type here using, and then we type the following at the next stage, system.data. These are namespaces. Remember when we talked about the schema and the table and the column? Same logic applies here. A namespace is basically a way of grouping related functionality together. So you have a namespace called system. See that? Namespace system. And then within that, you have another namespace named data. And they're designed that way because they're related in some fashion, and this is a way of grouping it. All right. You learn more about these in a hardcore C-sharp class. And we'll need one more here. So private data set, like that. And then here, we're going to say the following at the next line. And usually this is called DS, short for data set. And then you're going to type equals. That's the assignment operator. And then you type new data set. So we're making a new data set object. Okay, I hope you've got that. When you hover your mouse over it, you see it says represents an in-memory cache of data. A cache is just like a little bag, right? You fill it with some data and it resides in memory. Then you can use that as the data source for your grid view. You see? All right. So the next stage here, let's continue. Below that, we need the next bit, which is this one, the private. Again, private, so it's safe and secure in our code. No one can come and destroy it. And then SQL data adapter. That'll be next bit. And again, what we need is not showing up. I keep typing, but uh, it's not showing up. That usually means you need a namespace addition. So I'm going to do that next. And notice that once I do this line right here, data set, the one in the namespaces turns black. That means it's being used. And if something is not being used, you see all of these, you can remove them. Take a look. You know, right click and then remove and sort usings. You see? I will remove the unnecessary ones, give you extra space. All right, I'm going to add one more here. So using system dot data dot sql client like that so we need that namespace remember this here is for the data set resides there i'm going to keep it at that level of explanation all right and now the next thing is that over here in that sql client space or code what we have there is that the data adapter resides there so we need that okay so i'm going to type here private and then data adapter 
SQL data adapter to be more exact. Make sure you select that one. I'm going to type here, give it a name, adapter, and that's it. So why do we need the adapter? Well, what's the purpose of an adapter? In our case, the adapter is going to take the information that we get and it's going to fill our data set. So it acts as an intermediary level, so to speak, between the database and our data set. So we need the adapter for that purpose. And the last bit now is the connection string. So where do we get this? Okay, this is what you can do. Click on View and then scroll until you find the Server Explorer. Control-Alt-S as a key combination. And you can get the connection string from here as follows. I'm going to minimize these things a little bit. What you do is, again, if this is not connected right here, then look very carefully. There's a little thing that says connect to database. Click that, and it should connect you to the database. All right, after that, assuming you're connected to your database, you right-click on it, and then you scroll down to its properties, and a big panel well, it may not be big on your computer. I pulled it away this way. That's why it's big. You see the connection string? This right here? That's what you want. This is the same one as we've used before, obviously. It's just in a, It appears in a different place, but it's the same thing. So just right-click on it and copy it. I'm trying to cobble this together piece by piece by, and by hand is very hard. <laughs> so copy that. It's very easy to make mistakes. And after that, we're going to make use of it. So up here, type string usually i call it const string so the string is a data type good for storing characters const string is the name of our variable and now put this symbol right there and then put double quotes to indicate you're making a string that's how you indicate a string and then paste in the connection string take a look like that and the fact that it's broken over a couple lines doesn't mean anything I'm going to close the Server Explorer to get some more space. It looks like this now. So you've got your connection string, the same one as we've used before. And if you remove the add symbol here, take a look. You get rid of the add symbol. You see over here with the slash, it says it's giving you a little arrow. There's a little underlined red portion. It says unrecognized escape sequence. So because these slashes have a very special meaning, we can't just, you know, have them unless we also have that. And this now treats this as a literal string. That's it. Otherwise, you have to do individual escape characters. It gets too complicated. So this is better. So we've got the data set, which remember, in-memory cache of data. We've got the adapter. So it presents a set of data commands and a database connection that I use to fill the data set and update a SQL server database. So that's needed. And once we have those pieces and the connection string, we can continue as follows. At the next stage, I'm going to type this. I'm going to type inside the button submit click. I'm going to type using. And look very carefully. This using here is different from the usings up there. The usings up there mean bring in external code. This using means use the database connection and then dispose of it properly. Think about it. When you are doing this stage, you are reading from the hard drive. That means you're opening low-level hard drive resources to reach there and get data. right? Because the database ultimately is just some files on your drive, correct? Some code and software, but it's on your drive. So you want to make sure that process is done securely. So you access what you need, and then you close it. You terminate it. You dispose of it properly. Okay, so the next stage here, that's why this using is needed. I'm going to say SQL connection, and I'm going to type here con, and then I'm going to say equals a new SQL connection. So we're making a new connection, that's all. I'm going to type con string, you need that. What shows on the screen, hover your mouse over it, it says string and then connection string. So there are versions of this object. But for our purposes, you're making a new connection object, and what it requires is a connection string. 
So you can find the server in the database. All right, after that, stick in curly braces, a set of them. And here, at the next state, I'm going to type try. And a try is needed because code that can cause errors, you try to run it, but if it causes an error, you catch that error. And remember, we added a label, and a label will then be used to display the error so we know about what's happening. So the try again, this is where you place code that you try to run, but it could cause errors of various kinds. There's no guarantee, after all, that when you try to connect to the server, the server will be available. Maybe it's down for maintenance. You see? So you can try to do that, but it's not guaranteed to work. Or maybe somebody has deleted the database, and it won't work. So I'm going to say the file. I'm going to type adapter now. And remember, the purpose of the adapter is it represents a set of data commands and a database connection that are used to fill the data set and update a SQL Server database. So we need to first type the following, new SQL data adapter. And because remember, we have a box on our page. If you go through these options, these are the various versions of the adapter. You see this one right here that says string select command text, comma, SQL connection. So this is where you can read from the box and you pass in the connection object. So this is what I mean. Take a look. You're going to type text box one, or rather we typed txt query dot text. So that will get the text from the box. You're going to put a comma. And after that, you're going to specify the connection object. So I'm going to say here, con. So remember the adapter here is an object. You pass it in the query that's going to come from the box on the page. And then you also need the connection. So you need these two quantities to initialize this object to get to the database and pass some information into it. At the next stage, you're going to type adapter and then dot fill. And what are you going to fill? You're going to fill the data set. So as I said, the adapter functions as a kind of intermediate level between our program and the database, essentially. You've got the database, you've got the adapter. The adapter communicates with it. It fills our data set, and then the data set can be used as a data source for the grid view. Right, next stage, I'm going to type this, grid view 1, and then dot data source. So now you're setting the data source of this object. And again, remember, once this line operates, we have filled the data source. So we can type now DS. So the data set has been filled. Now you can use it as a data source for the grid view. The next stage, again, generate the columns. I'm going to say grid view one dot auto generate columns, set that equal to true. Next stage, as in the previous video, we got to bind everything together so that it actually displays. So type grid view one dot data bind. Okay, so grid view one dot data bind. There you go. So binds the data source to the grid view control. Good. All right. And now I need to handle one more thing. Remember, we have this within a try because these things could generate errors of various kinds. So at the next stage, after the try, you put a catch. And we need the catch because this is where we catch exceptions. So I'm going to type exception and then ex. The exception is a class, just like the SQL connection is a class. SQL adapter, you see that? Those are all classes. The data set is a class and so on. Again, that's too much for our purposes. We just have to understand how to use it, and that's all, so we can move forward. Put curly braces, now I'm going to type LBL, and then error.txt, and you're going to set the text property of the label by typing EX, which is the name of the exception object. An exception, for our purposes, is a predictable kind of error. So people have created a lot of code that stores useful information, so when an exception occurs, we can handle it gracefully. So I'm going to type ex and then dot message. All right. And this is it. We can run it now. All right. So we've got all of this code set up here. And 
Switch over to default at SPX for a second. Remember, that's the interface. So we've got all of this ready to go. Hit Google Chrome. Give it a second here. Okay. So you've got a query. And at first, we have nothing there. So I'm going to type something like select star from customers. And remember, we had the dollar symbol at the end of customers. I'm going to run the query here. And it fills the grid nicely. So that confirms that it's working. Okay. Now. And as you can imagine, you know, I can do other things here, obviously. So let's see. We've got the order ID. So I'm just going to type order by order ID. Let's see whether that will work. So just run the query. And yes, it's working, you see. So we have a nice interactive page. Now it's going one down to nine. So you can enter a full query here if you want. Let me close this. That's good. All right, so now what I'm going to do is open up SSMS. And remember in the databases here, we had my DBase and we had the tables and then we had the customers and the employees and the orders, databases and tables. So what we are going to do now is this. Imagine something has happened to the server. So right click and then stop the server. We wanna see how the page handles that. Stop the server. Click yes, give the server a stop. All right, it's stopped now. Look very carefully at the little red icon. Go back to Visual Studio for a second, open it up, and give this page here another go. So hit Google Chrome. And this time, well, usually when you double click, it shows the previous entries. So I'm just going to select the first one, select star from customers. And I'm going to try to run the query. All right, it's trying to get to the server. You can tell because the little icon in the tab is spinning. But as you can see, it's having trouble. And then it displays this giant message. And it says, in network-related instance-specific error occurred while establishing a connection to SQL Server. And that is correct, obviously, because I stopped it. Where is this coming from? Well, remember, this here is present. Let me close this. Because in our code, we had the try and the catch. So an error was generated, code didn't work, and as a result, label error.txt was equal, was set to the message carried by the exception object. You see? An object is just that, it's an object. It usually has some behaviors, things that it can perform, just like you can speak, run. And you have properties, for example, like your hair color, eye color, same thing here. EX is just an object like it. And it's got a property named message that you can use to determine what the problem is in your code. So in this case, as you can see, the server is shut down, so that's a useful message. Okay, I'm going to turn the server back on for a second. So right-click and then start the server again. Click yes. Good, and then go back to Visual Studio and run this page again at Google Chrome. And now, into that box, just type some nonsense, anything, and then run the query that way. And it says incorrect syntax near J. Okay, type in some other stuff, run the query, could not find stored procedure fads. Hey, but at least the page is not crashing, correct? That's a good thing. So let me close this. Okay, friends, I'm going to leave it here. I know this video is definitely longer, but as you can see, it's very practical. So remember, the big idea here is you've got the database layer. You've got the adapter. The adapter is used to fill the data set, and the data set becomes the data source for the grid view. And to make sure all of these pieces are nicely synchronized, Use data bind on the grid view. And then code that could generate errors of the kind I have shown you just now. You stick into a try, followed by a catch. Also remember that this using right here is present because when you reach to a database, you're going down to the file level, to the hard drive. You want to do that process with complete control. So you reach there, you get your resource. Do you want to dispose of the connection properly 
So there is nothing wrong. Nothing is left open accidentally in any fashion that someone could exploit. All right, I'm going to leave here. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.